the year 2020 slipping away, December has come. 2020 as a year just came in quietly like any other river, any other year. But uh, by the second month, it started showing its face. And since then you've been covering your face <laughs> mm, Unlike wars, natural calamities, famines, year 2020, has been haranguing human beings like nothing in recent times. Invisible. <laughs> Invisible to the eye, doesn't seem to cause any problem around us, but still killing over a million and a half people, and uh, if you didn't cover your face, those numbers would multiply in a big way. Many things have happened. Lives and livelihoods have been lost. The way we relate to each other, smiles have gone out of the world. Hello? Those unsmiling ones, you are the only ones benefiting from this mask <laughs> Now we don't know in what state you are. We, look, we have to look deep into your eyes to figure out <laughs> So, uh, I think uh, unsmiling faces are beginning to become happy because nobody can see. So many things we thought, people thought if they clap their hands, it'll go away. If you bang the plates, it will go away. If you light lamps and candles, it'll go away. We made rules, mask up or pay up, not much result. Not as expected at least. Well, uh, we said <laughs> that, uh, you know, many things people are doing around the world, prayers, chantings, looking up, looking down, mm -hmm. not yielding much result. There is uh, more alcohol in people's hands than in their gut these days. Must be causing a health revolution. Yes? <laughs> alcohol does not mean drinking anymore. Alcohol means... Uh, Because even I'm calling for alcohol many times, so <laughs> not for consumption, but uh, you know. How human beings transact is going through a serious change. Well, handshakes and Hugs are gone, Indians are happy. <laughs> Indians are happy <laughs> Many, many aspects of our life will definitely be irrevocably changed. Now the whole world is waiting, holding its breath for the magic wand solution of the vaccine. 
Well, the Russia came up with Sputnik. Well, America did not respond with an Apollo. Instead, two private companies came up with uh, a two-pronged attack. Very sharp teeth, both of them, because one thing is it's very expensive and very difficult to store and transport because of the temperature requirements. You need to be at minus seventy degrees Celsius. That's not easy to manage. It's going to be super expensive how we store and transport this vaccine. India came up with a cheaper option which can… which can also be transported at a much higher temperature. So what's the hitch? Ah, uh, the hitch is it's a two-stage vaccine that you have to take one today and after thirty days another one, otherwise it will not work. Get one billion people to go for two pricks in… in a month's time, oh, that's going to be a lot of effort. That's not going to be easy at all. So vaccine is not really a magic wand, it could uh, contain things, definitely will contain, but you can't wish it away. So year 2020 will definitely leave an indelible mark on the minds of this generation of people. They're not going to forget it. I don't think it will let us forget it so easily. So how we do things, how we relate to people, how we eat and transact in the world, everything has already changed, will further change. Even I have not traveled for months on end, that's a change <laughs> I'm… Uh, for the first time in the last forty years, I have the pleasure of picking my clothes off a wardrobe. Always I lived off a suitcase. <laughs> so, we can either complain or adapt or create new situations, new possibilities. This is a choice human beings have. But every other creature seems to be happier than before. At least for their sake, we must celebrate some, hello? Because they all seem to be happy. People are saying in big cities that the air is cleaner, the sky is blue. It always was, but city people were in a cloud. Either industrial smoke, automobile smoke, or cigarette smoke, or if you're from California, more potent smoke. Some… one way or the other, if the machines don't smoke us, we'll do it ourselves. I am not uh, trying to tell you what to do and what not to do, but I think uh, if you have not already learned the lessons of 2020 as to what to do and what not to do, early 2021 is going to teach you that. Uh, United States is right now going through its third wave and the worst one. We are talking less about it because we've had elections. We do elections and we still don't know. 
we're busy with that political stuff. And of course, uh, there's been Thanksgiving and Christmas is coming. This is the first time really, all this, uh, you know, whatever gifts coming with Santa Claus or, uh, you know, some wild animal bringing things for you. <laughs> for the first time, I think it's going to work because that wild animal is called Amazon right now <laughs> It's definitely growing <laughs> and uh, those of you who… Uh, who only walked in shopping malls, you have to find other places to walk. Hello? <laughs> If you must carry a bag to feel complete, well, there are still rocks <laughs> you can carry because you must feel heavy in the shoulder to feel satisfied. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> so, many adaptations you'll have to do. Well, people are busy always trying to judge whether this is good or bad. Nothing has ever been good or bad. In every situation, those who are conscious and who know how to respond to a given situation, thrive. Those who refuse to respond to the realities of one's existence will suffer. Now, uh, as if the pandemic, the virus pandemic was not good enough. People are predicting mental pandemic, suicide pandemic. In this year, in Japan, more people have committed suicide than the number of people who died of this virus. If the virus doesn't succeed, we will do it ourselves. So, this in many ways exposes how human beings are living. They are saying in UK, between the ages of sixteen and twenty-four, four out of every ten in that population, in that age group population, cause physical harm to themselves at least once a month or so. They want to pull their hair, they want to cut their hands, they want to bang their heads on the wall. See, this is not entertainment. Why I'm using the word entertainment is because anywhere you watch a television or you see the movies, everywhere it is being projected like this, the best way to handle your emotions is punch something, somebody if you get, you find somebody weaker than you, punch them. Otherwise, at least punch a glass pane or a mirror or if you're stupid, punch a wall or a rock or scream and yell and roll around and throw things at everybody or nobody. Hello, this is becoming the standard way of handling emotions. Huh? All of you doing this at home? <laughs> At least the crockery industry must be doing well. <laughs> In our cultures, right from our childhood, if we get angry and something, first thing was just shut up and sit down. If you're angry, it's your business, all right? You deal with it. Don't give it to anybody else, just shut up and sit down there. Yes, if you… If you get angry, at least this much you must do. You have no business to get angry because by being angry, you cause more damage to yourself than anybody else most of the time, unless you're working in Hollywood. 
generally most human beings cause more damage to themselves than to anybody else when they're angry. Most human beings, only a few get to damage other people. So do I have a right to damage myself? After all, it's my life. Well, you need to understand your life is not your life. For you to be who you are right now, well, leaving the nature alone, to feed you, to clothe you, to keep you alive, to make you go here to there, thousands and thousands of people have worked to bring you up as a full-grown adult, yes or no? Huh? Somebody has to grow the food, somebody has to spin the a uh, thread, somebody has to weave the clothing, somebody has to make the various other services for you. So do you have a right to simply obliterate yourself? No. People may think I'm infringing on their personal liberties. Life has liberty to live. Terminating life, just like that is not your business. Hello? You are actually. Because the same bubble of air which we call as atmosphere has been around for millions of years. Same air. I'm saying, saying all of us are on recirculated air. Thousands of people or trillions of people or countless number of people for thousands and thousands of generations have been breathing the same air. I want you to know even the toad in the pond breathes the same air. Hello? Toad, you know, you are breathing his exhalation also. <laughs> yes. So, I'm just talking about your breath, but in every way, from your breath, body, food, soil, water, air, to the subatomic particles, every one of them know that life can only be inclusive. Only you, who has got a sanatorium up here, <laughs> hello? Your mind is a sanatorium because it's exclusive. Now ideas of inclusion are coming ideas. Once in a way, uh, going back to the first question, when somebody drives you a little crazy in a positive way, then you want to include them. If they drive you a little more crazy, then you want to exclude them. This must have happened to you, isn't it? The same person who drove you crazy in a sweet way, after some time drove you crazy, in a very bad way. <laughs> Happened to you or no? <laughs> Let me tell you, this happened. A judge, judge, you know, who takes decisions on people's lives, who should live, who should die, who should hang, who should walk, who should go to prison, who should be free, all these judgments. If you are a reasonably sincere human being, you know there are no absolutes about these things. Some struggle will be there within a human being for hanging somebody or imprisoning somebody, you know. Unless you are a total fanatic, you think, yes, he must hang. Otherwise, there is a little struggle as a human being. So to beat this one day, Judge O'Brien got really drunk. And uh, he came home very drunk and he puked all over himself. He was in a mess but he came and slept. In the morning, the moment he was little more stable, he was very embarrassed. 
And he told his wife, you know, I was coming by train and this guy sitting next to me puked upon me. <laughs> then he left for the court. Then he knew what he said to his wife was not convincing enough. So he called her and said, can you believe this, Mary? You know, the guy who puked on me yesterday, today came to the court and I gave him thirty days. Then the wife said, you better make it sixty because he also did shit in your pants. Inclusive, you know <laughs> Inclusiveness is not an idea, not even an ideal or not a philosophy of yours. This is the way life is happening, that is the only way it can happen. If you're in tune with life around you, if you're in tune with this life, if you know how this is happening right now, you will naturally be inclusive. If you're living in your sanatorium, then you will be exclusive. Hmm?